I'm now downstairs in, in the workshop, sitting at my Macrigore's loom. Um, this was originally the loom I had with a, a, a dobby on top. It's an old Lervard loom, a very good Danish make. And I took all the innards out of it, so it's more or less just a frame, and set, set it up for making the Macrigore's. And now they all depend on a, a rigid heddle. Um, here, here are two rigid heddles uh, of d different sets. And <clears throat> what I do is to make small warps, uh, which I put on a bobbin, and each warp is threaded through a rigid heddle. So you've got uh, 18 threads wound here <clears throat> and 18 threads threaded there. And then um, each, each one is weighted like that. And the sh shot from the back of the loom will show you the, the, them lined up like that. So each of these y units uh, it is like a, uh, a two harness loom. Everything a two harness loom. <clears throat> will do, this will do. It, when it moves up and down, it will give you the two sheds. When you move it towards the weft, it will beat up the weft. So in this very compact co compass, you've got the complete um, but properties of, of a two-shaft loom. If um, Wendy will hold that, we can just show you the, the two sheds. And the up shed, which you can see is a pretty good shed for a shuttle to go through. If I pull it down, uh, I get the down shed. So it gives you two adequate sheds for a shuttle to go across, which is all I need for this very uh, uncomplex structure. So, so, <clears throat> so when I started this, I ordered um, these rigid heddles in 36 inch widths and, and cut them up, some into two inch widths, so some into one inch, and uh, sealed the ends so the d dents d didn't come out. And, th and that's what I use in, in this reed. Now, as you saw, that this had to go uh, up and down to get the two sheds, so obviously your batten has to be a, a different sort of batten not one that just swings, it has to go up and down. Um, so I'll move these away. <clears throat> and this is on, on springs, so when I release it from those chains, it, it goes up and it uh, gives me a, a perfectly good uh, up shed for, for the shuttle. And then I press it down, it, it gives me the equally good down shed. So I've got the two sheds <coughs> for the shuttle and, and <coughs> when I want to beat I can, I can just swing it like that. Of course it hasn't got this um, uh, ability to be at right angles to the warp so when you beat up you've got to be careful that you're holding it straight. And then <coughs> when you, the whole point of it is that we want to be able to cross these little units of warp over each other. And to, to do that, I've, I've got to steady this again, which is a bit of a fiddle. Okay. So <clears throat> now these, I know these chains are equal. So now this is at right angles, <coughs> angles to the warp. And now Stacy is going to take the weights off. Um, normally she isn't here, so I have to hop round and do it myself. I, I found by chance that taking the weights off uh, came very easily. If I put this bit, put one on. If, if you imagine that's hanging at the back of the loom, <clears throat> you might think it's an awful bother to have to take all these weights off. But actually, I can take off four at a time because if I d just lift it up, it automatically comes off. The, the center of gravity of the bob bobbin just twists enough to, to unhook itself. That was something I, I didn't realize would happen. 
So now that there's no tension on the warp. <coughs> so now you, you may have noticed these hinges and that's it, so I can do that. And now these are all uh, available to be, to be played with. For instance, I could take those two middle black ones and, and cross them. Uh, or I could take one here and uh, turn it upside down. Or I can take two and I hope cross two over two. Which I'm doing rather clumsily because my stereoscopic vision has gone. Uh, but I think you can see, you, you, you can play about the warp in uh, any way you like. Um, I, I could have set up a warp with spaces, in which case the warp could just move around. But as it is, I got a warp, which is solid all the way across, so I can uh, cross it, twist it, or, or leave it alone. Uh, and you can see that what, what opportunities that, that gives one for, for patterning. The, then you have to uncross the warps beyond the reed and, and the weights go on again. And because each little unit has got its own weight, the fact that these warp threads are taking a, a longer course th than those, that they're still at the same tension, um, you've got complete freedom for, of movement of the warps. And because each one of these units is individually weighted with its own bobbin, whatever I do in angling the warp, the, the tension is going to stay the same. So having done that cross, <clears throat> I, I'll then put a clamp on. put these little C clamps all the way across to hold the threads in that position because if I tried to weave with the crossed threads they'd immediately try to uncross so I want to hold them in that new position and once the, the clamp was there then I could weave beyond perhaps three picks of linen, uh, a steel rod, another three picks of linen then I could take the clamp off um, and uh, paint the the weaving with uh, some some adhesive. G generally, I use um, the diluted PVA. So um, you you can see that it's one is uh, w working in sort of jumps. There's a crossing stage, and then there's a little bit of weaving. Then you jump forward to the next crossing stage. So your actual you there aren't actually picks per inch. It's more like inches per pick because there's such, such a, a lot of non-weaving uh, in, in between. Um, the, the idea of this whole machine was to, um, to make threads cross each other and qu quite often when you uh, adapt a loom for a certain purpose uh, you, you find it will do other things which you hadn't th thought of and uh, one obvious one was not to cross the threads but just to make them move uh, as they as you went from the bottom to the top of the hanging. So there was quite a lot of a series of hangings in which um, threads perhaps separated out and then joined in and separated, or they sort of zigzagged up. Uh, then one could um, somersault them, as I showed you. And, but always one was putting in rods in order to keep it flat, 